everybody, it's Jenny, and today I'm going to be making a really fun St. Patrick's Day card for Miss Ink Stamps. I'm going to be using a bunch of awesome products, starting with the Everyday Sentiment stamp set, along with the Love is in the Air stamp set from the latest release. I'm also going to be using the Scalloped and Stitch Frame Dies from the Oh Happy Day Frame Die set. And to add to my sentiment, I'm also going to be using the Alpha dies from the Modern Typeset Frame die. And for my card today, the sentiment is going to read, So Very Lucky for Brew. I'm going to use the So Very and For You stamps from the Everyday Sentiment stamp set. And I'm going to start by heat embossing them with some white embossing powder onto some black cardstock. So to start off my embossing, I'm going to go ahead and run my anti-static powder tool across the cardstock and then go ahead and stamp out my words with some Versamark ink. Next up, I'm going to add the embossing powder. And I'm also going to bring in a paintbrush just to wipe away any extra powder around the words. Then I'm going to melt everything in place with my heat tool. After everything is nice and melted, I'm going to use a microfiber cloth to wipe away any extra anti-static powder and then go ahead and trim out my words with my scissors. Next up, I'm going to bring in the alpha dies for the words lucky and brew, and I'm just going to lay those out because I'm going to go ahead and trim those out of some gold foil cardstock. Once I have all my letters die cut, I'm going to lay those out once more just to play around with the placement along with my heat emboss sentiments. Off camera, I also heat emboss those words onto some green cardstock and I'm just going to see how they look when my card comes together. But before that, I'm going to use my scallop die here to trim out that centerpiece from some green cardstock. And I'm going to use a pencil to go ahead and add five dots to the front. And then I'm just going to use a kneaded eraser to make them as light as possible. Because I'm going to be taking this double heart stamp and cutting it apart so I can use those two hearts separately to go ahead and create some four leaf clovers. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that using some Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide. After I have my clovers all stamped out, I'm going to bring in some Copic markers to color them in.
Next, I'm going to add the two mugs with the heart steam onto my little panel here. And I'm just going to test the placement with the piece of acetate to make sure I have everything nice and centered. Once I know my image is nice and centered, I'm going to go ahead and use the same Distress Oxide to go ahead and add that image to my panel. Then I'm going to bring in those same two heart stamps again and the same Distress Oxide and go ahead and decorate my cups with some more clovers. Also brought in some post-it notes to create some quick masks so that I could have the design kind of go off the edge of the cups. And once my final image was all stamped out, I'm going to bring in some Copic markers and go ahead and color everything in. I'm also going to bring in a super light green to give a little dimension to my cups. To make up the rest of the layers of my card, I'm going to bring in some more green and St. Patrick's Day themed cardstocks, as well as another piece of gold foil for the smaller frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and die cut those all out. For this piece of pattern cardstock here, I'm just going to use my paper trimmer to trim that down so that it fits within the stitched border on my solid green cardstock panel. Next, I'm going to layer up all my pieces to just see how we're looking. And I decided to trim out the center of that pattern paper just so I could save it for another project since it was going to be covered anyway.
After I have that piece trimmed out and layered everything back up again, I can go ahead and start playing around with my sentiment. And here is where I went back and forth with the green and black sentiments and ultimately decided on the black. And once I had everything laid out how I liked it, I went ahead and glued everything in place. For the final step, I brought in an A2 size card base and went ahead and added my card panel to the card front with some double sided tape. And here's a closer look at my finished card. I had a lot of fun bringing all these elements together, especially with the punny sentiment to give it a fun St. Patrick's Day twist. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.